Task of the day, we are going to maintain a tag for orders that were processed today. For our purposes, it's literally going to be a today tag that will make that configurable. And we're gonna begin by auto taking orders as soon as they come in. Um, if an order was created, um, we know that it was created today. There's a little bit of nuance here because an order could be created with a um, backdated process stat value, so we'll need to make sure to check for that. Uh, but this will be the structure. We'll begin by auto-tagging orders as they come in, and then we'll have a scheduled uh, event here running every 10 minutes, maybe, um, to untag orders that fall behind our threshold. So let's start um, at the beginning. Let's begin with orders create here. Um, actually, let's begin a little bit before that. Let's start with figuring out what our threshold for today actually is. Now there's some ambiguity in the spec here. Are we talking about today being the past 24 hours? Or are we talking about today being the calendar date? Um, we're gonna make that configurable. So if options dot um, use rolling 24 hour window. Um, we're gonna let that be configurable. So we'll say, if that's the case, um, here we go. I've done enough date stuff that this is my preferred format. Assign now. Um, this is going to be the representation of now in the seconds in the Unix timestamp. So it's the number of seconds since the Unix epoch. Now this is a really useful um, construction right here. Uh, by getting us a date in seconds and then using this to cast it to an integer, we now have something that we can do math with. Um, so, Um, that's clearly not a value yet. We're about to create, calculate it. Um, but until then, and then we'll do something else here. Okay, cool. So we're working on this variable here. Um, so we're looking at 24 hours. And I like to make this explicit here. I could do all the math myself separately and just put in a number. But if I do it here, um, the people who follow me will know exactly what's going on. So 24 hours times 60 minutes in an hour times 60 seconds in a minute. And that's our threshold. Or that's our interval of 24 hours in seconds. And our threshold is now minus that 24 hour rolling value. Um, if that option is not selected, then we're going to go with whatever the beginning of today actually was. And for this, we don't actually need to use now s at all, which means that I can move this here, oops. There we go. Um, for here, we can say assign today um, s and therefore the threshold. And we can begin with just giving ourselves the current date and we'll echo this just to make sure that we can, that we are using our format here. Um, action, echo, and this variable is currently a misnomer, but we're just testing. Um, syntax error on line four. What have I done wrong? Expected end of string, but found this instead. Weird, I don't actually see my issue. But it's here? Yeah, it's here. Um, now s minus. Oh, maybe variable name can't start with. That might be it. Yep. Ta-da! Okay. All right, so we have year, date, uh, year, month, date. And then we're going to cast this back into a date, or rather into a Unix timestamp. Okay, cool. Um, I have double echoes for some reason. Oh, no, no, it's because we're using two different subscriptions. So we're seeing two different preview runs. So here is this. If I use that, our value should be slightly different. If we use that, our echo is just gone. So let's move this down here. Cool. Um, now our threshold, I'm actually going to have this formatted in an ISO 8601 format. And because that's something that it will be understood by Shopify's order API. So let's convert that to um, something that I can actually use. Um, that logic will be shared, so we'll do it down here. Assign threshold. Uh, 
Um, let's see, uh, Ruby ISO 8601 date formats. Um, some of these I have committed to memory and some of them I don't. So let's take a quick look at um, this kind of person pasted this from the Ruby docs. I'm looking specifically for this. Um, we want the current, yes, yeah, so this is the simplest way to do this. We want the current date, the current time, and the time zone. And we're going to echo that too. Okay, perfect. So right now, this is exactly 24 hours ago. I'm in central time. That would be 4 p.m. yesterday, um, which is not exactly what I'm seeing here. Is this right? Um, 24 times 60 times 60, that's correct. Well, that's at least accurate. Um, pretty sure this is 5 p.m. and not 4 p.m. Maybe our times, oh, you know what? I'm in daylight savings. Um, okay, cool. That just kicked in and then here in Chicago. All right, so we're good there. Um, we now have our threshold. That's what we're gonna be using. And um, we have our threshold in seconds as well. So we'll use these for two different things. Um, okay, back to the task at hand. So we're, we've got an order coming in. Um, so if we're looking at the create event topic, um, what we can do is check to see what the orders process stat value looks like. Um, now, if you haven't been through this already, you should know that in this preview block here for this particular preview run, I can click this to get an idea of what data will be coming in for any given order. This is exactly the kind of stuff that you could find in the Shopify webhook documentation, um, but it's nice to be able to see it here. Processed at is what we're specifically going to be looking at, and you'll note that this value is in exactly the same format as the one that we just generated, which is great. Um, however, to make sure um, that we're not juggling time zone weirdness, um, we are not going to do an exact stream comparison. We're going to convert this to Unix timestamp and then compare that to our threshold in seconds. So, and we know that order variable is in place because uh, right here, that's visible. And we know that because as a matter of policy, mechanic makes available the incoming resource information in the singular form of the event topic subject. So order.processed at date. And we're casting to the integer again. Cool. And then if this is greater than or equal to our threshold, um, then we perform our tagging. And for the moment, we can pull this from here. We'll probably do some refactoring as we continue writing the task in order to not duplicate our code. But for now, we can start here. Um, I'm pulling this from our help area for Mechanic itself. There's a chunk of GraphQL that I can use here. And we're looking not at the customer, but at the order. And we're adding the tag of the merchant's choosing. Um, tag to, I'll use this. All right, cool. Options missing, required option. Okay, order tag, today. Um, now here's an important thing. We don't have any preview actions for this run just yet. Uh, the best way that I've found to make sure that we're using preview actions properly is to not make any assumptions about what this order is going to contain. By way of illustration, if I echo out the order that we've received, we'll see uh, a bunch of order data that Mechanic has pulled, in this case, using the most recent uh, orders create event that we have on file for this particular Mechanic account, which is great. Uh, but uh, the technique that I found means that, let me start that sentence over. The best way that I've found to prove that our event or that our task works and also to generate preview actions is to scrap that pre-assigned value entirely and create an order of our choosing or of our own construction. So event.preview, so if we're in preview mode, if I can spell, we 
we're going to create an order from scratch. We're going to say this order is going to be Um, and we're going to do just one second after our threshold. You might be able to see where this is going. We're going to end up with an order that is always going to be within our threshold, but only in preview mode, uh, which means that not only can we generate a preview event, but we can prove that our logic around qualifying the order actually works. So threshold seconds plus one date, and then we'll use the same format that we've discussed a couple of times. Cool. Um, now up here in this preview, you'll note that tags add has an ID of null. Um, that's because so far here, we don't have an admin GraphQL API ID. Now we do. Cool. Um, this is important for two things. One, this should always look sane, and now it does. Two, um, now that we filled in a uh, GID that refers to an actual order, Mechanics is going to be able to tell that tags add is a mutation that's going to need the right orders API scope granted, which means that now the task will have enough information to request from me, the merchant, the necessary permissions to actually run. Cool, so that's that. Um, we can test this by subtracting a second instead. Our preview action is now missing, which is exactly what we want. Plus, wonderful. Okay, um, we have our dummy order right here. We have logic filtering out um, things that are behind our threshold. And we have our mutation that actually adds the tag, fantastic. So now we've got incoming orders taken care of. Um, let's go ahead and save this. And we're going to be prompted for permission, which is exactly as anticipated. Um, double checking this, we'll see that we are managing orders, cool. We'll update the at, and there we go. All right, so now every 10 minutes, um, let's back up and think about what we want to do here. And I'm leaving this vag here to allow for scheduling hourly or scheduling daily or whatever, under, uh, whatever other interval the merchant prefers. Okay, cool, so backing up as promised. What we're going to do is query Shopify for orders that have the tag um, but are behind the threshold. And to build our query, I'm going to use Graphical, um, which is, here's our, it's a different test store. Okay, we're going to take a look at the mechanic demo installation of Shopify Graphical app. If you're not familiar with Graphical, it is a graphical interface for GraphQL, and it is awesome. Makes it super easy to build queries for use in Mechanic or anywhere else. Um, honestly, we'll probably pull in something, like a version of this in Mechanic itself at some point. So we're gonna be querying for orders. First, we'll talk about pagination in a second, um, and let's build out our query. So we're talking about orders that are tagged with tag that we're talking about. If I hit command enter, it fills in all this for me. Um, I don't have any orders that qualify for this tag right now. Um, but I suppose I could sell one up. Um, we've got some orders here before. Whoa, I wonder why we flipped through German just then. That was fascinating. Huh. All right, that was very interesting. Cool. Uh, today, save. Wonderful. All right, if I run this again, again with command enter, let's give this a minute for Shopify's index to update. There we go. And, oh, 1010, which is the one that I just entered, or updated, perfect. Huh, some indexing weirdness. Okay, there we go, propagation maybe. Okay, cool. So we have tagged today and we have processed at, we're specifically looking for items that are behind our threshold. So let's grab a copy of this using echo. Cool, sample string. So we're looking for things that are behind our threshold. Um, and we can test our syntax here by bumping this behind 
the date that we're actually talking about here. So this is on the 9th, so let's take this down to the 8th. Um, that appears to not be working, so maybe I'm doing this wrong. Let's take a look at, I don't know, we are in the right place. Um, let's take a look at the documentation for search syntax. Cool. Um, tiny bug in this GraphQL setup. This definitely needs to open up in a new tab, and it is not. All right. Okay, no, that comparator syntax was proper. We're looking for things that are behind this particular time. And we're talking about two different time zones here, so maybe that's my only mistake. Okay, cool. All right, so our syntax works. That's great. Um, now this is in UTC and this is in minus five. So this minus five should give us uh, the eighth at 24, so 19. Um, oh, 08 at 19. 10 um, at 43. Uh, I think this should be, you know what, here, let's do a quick test over here. Um, assign let's convert this into a format we've been using. Let's echo that back out. All right, so this is an exact conversion of that other value. Which means if I drop this by a second, it should work, and it's not working. Shopify isn't documented that they support this entire thing, so I don't know if I want to marry myself to it or not. We're definitely... our threshold here. Hmm. Is it just ignoring the time side of this? Hmm. Interesting. What if I go to UTC with it? Okay. Hmm. So we're not paying attention to seconds. Doesn't look like we're paying attention to minutes. Really, are we only paying attention to dates? That's not wonderful. Okay, cool. So here's what we're going to do. It doesn't look like we can rely on the time portion of this timestamp. It looks like we can only rely on dates, which is not fantastic. So what we're going to do is query for just the date. Hmm. You know what, here, we're just going to query for the tag. We're going to skip the time portion of this completely um, because there shouldn't ever be that many, relatively speaking, orders returned here. We're just going to query for the day, for the tag and check the processed at property for each of these orders in the same way that we check the processed at property of the of incoming newly created orders. And we'll call that a day. So to begin with, um, we're going to grab a chunk of code Amazing. We're going to grab a chunk of code from our help center, from the GraphQL section, one that uses pagination, because we're going to be working with multiple pages of orders here. Um, I'm deciding to do it this way rather than using um, a bulk operation. That's the term with capital letters, because bulk operations can take a while to come back, although this one shouldn't take that long. Um, and like I said, we're only talking about, at most, a day's worth of orders really maybe only 10 minutes worth of orders. 
So doing normal pagination in the context of a task shouldn't take that much time, again, relatively speaking. So we'll grab this chunk of code and we'll, oops, and we'll use it as inspiration. Coming back over here and scrapping all of that. Um, here we are. Nope, 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 nope. There we go. Okay, cool. So um, I'm going to say orders to hmm, untag. We're, like I said, I think we can do some reformatting here. We, what we might do is build up a list of mutations to then output at the end, or we might output a list of orders to, or we might like build up an array of orders, either an order list of one or an order list of many, and then I'll do all the evaluation at the end. I don't love duplicated logic, so I'm gonna do what I can to combine these two sections, order create and the manual um, evaluation. So um, orders, let's, let's go with that ladder route. Let's build up an array of orders to work with. So array orders equals this. Oops, that's not how we initialize. Orders equals array. We're grabbing the first 250 orders after a query which is initialized as nil. And we're going to query for the tag that the merchant has configured with. So we're going to begin by formatting this as JSON, which we'll throw quotes around it in case they've added weird characters to it. And we're going to prepend it with a tag and then throw quotes around it again. Um, this will escape everything nicely and we'll end up with something that looks like that. Cool. So we have this. Um, we're looking at our edges of orders and all we want is the ID and the, if it's here, we already know if the tag is in place. We don't need to select tags. Um, processed at is the only thing that we need to take a look at. Okay, for product edge in orders.edges. And we can add this to the array of orders that we initialized up here. I don't actually care about this extra bit. Okay. If there is a next page, uh, update the cursor and do the loop, otherwise we break out. And now we have a set of orders, cool. Um, or order nodes containing a, a GraphQL API ID and a process stat value. Um, I am going to go ahead and pull this out over here and just add to our orders list. I'll have to move the initialization up, but for right now. Um, assign order equals, mm, I have to reformat things a little bit. Actually, here, let's do this. Order. We're just translating between formats here. Oops. Um, processed at. Okay. And maybe for clarity, we'll call this order nodes. Cool. Okay. Um, I gotta move this up here. I have something on the clipboard that I want to delete. Okay. Awesome. So now at the very end of this, we have a list of order nodes. Um, at most one. Um, or no, sorry. At minimum one. At most many. And down here, we'll do the actual work of tagging or evaluating whether or not we need to tag. Okay. So we have two cases here. What we need to do is say if process stat is greater than or equal to the threshold, 
Um, then we need to add the tag. Oh, here's the part where we might actually need to um, think about whether or not the tag is actually present. Um, if process stat is greater than threshold, unless order node dot tags contains, is we don't want to do any duplicate work, and there does exist a possibility that an order was created with this tag already in place. Um, improbable, but if I know a behavior could exist, I want to handle it sanely. So if we've met the threshold and unless it's already tagged, we add the tag. Um, otherwise, if we haven't met the threshold, and we can combine these here, um, else if order node tags contains I suspect this case will never, oh, no, 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 okay. Um, I was going to say, we could just say else and then always remove, um, but we will hit this case if an order is created that has been backdated and we don't want to be automatically untagging every order that's created back tagged or backdated if it doesn't have the tag. So again, this is just for the sake of completeness. So we're gonna do tags remove and do that thing. Okay, cool, I think we're almost done. We're going to now, now that we're talking about tags, we're going to make sure that we are selecting tags in GraphQL. And we're gonna do a similar port over here. Uh, webhooks always deliver tags as a common delimited string. That's what's going on here. Um, okay, sweet, so if we've done our work right, We'll have a preview event for this, but not for this, right? Or preview action, rather. And that's because um, we haven't set up any um, dummy data over here. I need a better term for that. Uh, placeholder data, maybe? Preview data? Um, OK, cool. So let's just adapt this for our purposes. Um, recalling that we are now, oops, recalling that we are now selecting tags as well. And I've done this enough times that I'm just typing it without narrating. Uh, Mechanic really deserves a, like a snippet gallery, something that would allow us to easily insert often used boilerplate in cases where said boilerplate doesn't deserve to have its own liquid tag or something. Um, we don't have that yet, but I think we will. Yep, I see it. Okay, cool. Um, let's sub this out for innocuous looking numbers. Okay. And our tag that we want to potentially be removing, and the tag that I want to demonstrate removing is really what it comes down to. Again, remember the demonstration is both for mechanics sake and for the merchants. So let's say hypothetically we found one order that has the tag and it was processed at um, a time that was very long ago. Cool. Um, so I want to do that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So now we have our tag removal example um, for ten minutes, and our tag is add example for this. Um, let's do some quick testing, um, and we don't even actually have to run the task at all to do this testing because, as I said, we've created uh, the, the, these preview objects, um, or these objects that only exist in preview mode, and we can tweak them as necessary. So let's say that our processed at value, I already, I already did this, but to demonstrate again, let's say this thing was processed um, behind our threshold instead of ahead of it. Perfect. Um, let's say that it is ahead of our threshold, but it's already tagged. No preview event, perfect. Um, say that it's tagged with something unrelated. All right, wonderful. Um, okay, let's say that it is tagged, but it's behind our threshold. We're gonna be removing that tag as it comes in. This is an unforeseen consequence that's actually nice and correct. Um, if an order is created, backdated, but tagged, we're gonna fix that instantly. I didn't think about that scenario, but because I've built this task with preview data in place 
um, and in such a way that both our handling of order creations and our schedule or our handling of scheduled untaggings, because those are all handled the same way, the logic isn't duplicated. Um, we're handling this scenario exactly as we as we should. So let's get that out of the way. Perfect. And let's test this situation down here really quickly. So let's say process stat is actually in the future. What does that actually mean? Um, oh, well, <laughs> we're definitely ahead of our threshold and we already have the tag, which means we're just fine. But if we're in the future and we remove the tag, we should see, yep, we're adding the tag. That's great. Um, that scenario will definitely not happen because this payload um, only comes back with orders that already have the tag. So we don't actually need to change this at all. Um, really, the only thing that we want to check is, is the tag left in place for something that's ahead of the threshold, which we are seeing happens here. So that's great. We're good to go. I um, believe we're all set. So let's hit save. Um, let's do a quick trigger check just to make sure that in action, uh, no, user slash trigger is what that's called. And let's update. Do, 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 do. Here we go. Um, I'll put this back to schedule in a second, but for right now, I'm just going to say else. Let's run this manually and see what happens. One task. Do, 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 do. Generally, task runs happen immediately. Sometimes there's a bit of a queue and it can take like maybe up to 30 seconds to run. There we go. Perfect, and we're moving that tag right away. If I run this again, unless there were other orders, well, no, they would have been untagged already. Um, if I run that again, we should discover no untaggings. Wonderful. All right, let's put that, let's remove this, and let's put this back. I always like to be explicit about what event topics I'm intending to handle, um, because I've had cases where well-intentioned folks have modified task scripts or just added subscriptions um, without understanding what the relationship is between the subscription and the code down here. So by being explicit down here, I'm saving a hypothetical person a headache. Um, probably wouldn't be too dangerous in this particular case to just add a random subscription. Probably wouldn't be bad. Um, but again, there have been cases where folks have just added a subscription and unforeseen consequences have arisen. So by being explicit, we save um, hypothetical time. All right, I think we are all set. So I'll be throwing this in the mechanic test library in just a minute. And yeah, hope you're having an awesome day. Cheers. And while I was writing the documentation for this, I realized that the 10 minute interval is only necessary, only useful really, if we are using this rolling 24 hour window. If we're not doing that, we only need to run this once at midnight, which means that we can be a little bit more friendly to, uh, well, mechanics runtime itself, um, but also just we can be a little bit more correct. If I hit enable liquid here and I pull in this option, I can decide whether we use this 10 minute window or a simple daily subscription. We can see that indicated over here. Right now we'll run every 10 minutes, but if I uncheck this, we'll see that this runs every day at midnight instead, which is perfect. So uh, that's all for the addendum. Again, hope you're having a wonderful day. Cheers.